In all my time on YouTube, I have built a lot of engines. Anywhere from two strokes to four stroke engines. And with all of these engines, I've been trying to chase one thing efficiency. Now I was able to actually achieve some really good efficiency with this engine right here, my version 2 four stroke engine. But you guys wanted more. And because majority of my uploads recently have been air engine related, I'm giving you guys one more. That's right, more cylinders, more power, and an exhaust note that just makes you drool. I give you the cross plane inline four engine. Hello everyone, my name is Axel and I like to build stuff. Now this engine may seem like a normal inline four engine, but let me tell you, it is not. It's got a special crankshaft that gives it a sick exhaust note, and on top of that, it also self starts. Let me show you what I mean. A normal inline four uses a flat plane crankshaft. This means two pistons go up while two pistons go down. This gives the engine an even firing order, great primary balance, and overall, super good reliability. However, the exhaust note can sound a little flat, and on top of that, they're used everywhere, so they're not that unique. However, the cross-plane inline four engine developed by Yamaha post-2008 not only sounds cool, but it uses a very weird firing order. The reason why it does this is so then it can deliver power faster and even rev higher. The way by achieving this is by using a firing order of 270 degrees, 180 degrees, 90 degrees, followed by 180 degrees. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? As this was a brand new engine, I had to start somewhere. So of course, I got it in Fusion 360, and this is what I got. Right here is the first engine. It's got four intake manifolds, as you can see right here. As you can see right there, we got the pistons all in there. That's the weird firing order. We got the timing gears and everything. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, so before I even start building any of the normal parts of the engine, uh, besides the camshaft, because that was a little difficult to get on camera, so sorry about that. But, right here, I've got the cylinder head, I've got all four ball valves in there, see that? Uh, all the O-rings are in there, so I'm going to get this fitted, and then I'm going to cap these off, just like in the one cylinder engine, and then I'm going to start on the crankshaft, because the crankshaft is very important that we do it right. Okay, so that was a lot of sanding as you can see by all the dust all around here. It's pretty dirty. I've torn up my hands Yeah, that was a lot, but so I got all the pistons sanded down so then Super smooth as you can see there falls right through So now what I'm gonna do is I've grind is I've grinded down these bolts to the point where they'll actually fit in the piston without rubbing um, Yeah after this, I just need to attach them to here. We'll plop the block on top, and then it's just a matter of putting on the muffler and timing, and then putting on the cap and testing it. So, I've been working pretty hard, and the engine is finally done. This thing looks so sick, honestly. I don't really care if it's even going to work or not. Um, I still need to clamp down the head, but that's okay. Um, I'm just waiting on some more PVC adapters for the plumbing, and then I'll be able to test this thing out. Alrighty, so the engine is now fully built. Right here, as you can see, all the plumbing and everything is still attached. It's all in one piece. Clamp in the vise nice and level. Okay, right, here we go. Well, it is definitely working. It does not like those low pressures though. Here you go. Dag, 
gum. That was a disappointment. <sighs> the problem is I can't just leave the video here because that wouldn't be right to end, a, end off a good series like that. And because this is the last Air Engine video, I have to do this right. And do right, I sure did. This engine got one millimeter larger pistons, a third support crankshaft bearing, it had better precision timing, and on top of all that, I spent days friction hunting and getting this thing to run as smooth as possible. So with that, it's time to test it. Alrighty, so I'm out here, I've got the cross plane engine right here in the vise, I've got uh, the heaviest flywheel I have on here, so then hopefully it'll rev the lowest and we get to hear that beautiful soundtrack. Let's get right into this. Okay, so the first test is going to be 20 PSI, because that's what I run all my engines at, and um, I really hope this thing self-starts, because that'll be pretty cool. Okay. That's 20. Here we go. Yo! That sounds so cool. Oh. That's 40. Here we go. Yo, let's go! That thing sounds sick! Oh man, that's sick. Here, let's do it again, but give it a little bit of throttle. Yo. So it runs nothing like the one cylinder at all. Oh, but it runs, oh, it runs so beautifully. So this crossplane engine is sick. I absolutely love it. It sounds so good, and I definitely recommend you building it yourself. Now, speaking of building it yourself, you can download all the files for this beautiful engine on Thingiverse. I'll leave some links in the description for you guys. And also because this is sadly the last air engine I'm gonna be doing for quite a while, I need your guys' ideas. I love hearing the creative ideas you guys have in the comment section, so I can't thank you guys enough. As far as the future, well, I've got one huge project coming up, and I'm gonna be learning how to weld, how to paint, it's gonna be insane. So please look out for that and subscribe because we are quickly approaching 600 subscribers and all your guys' support makes this all possible. So again, thank you guys very much and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.